Coming up today, the fallout from yesterday's latest protest violence in Bangkok, the first vaccine rollout in Thailand, and a major drug haul along the Mekong River. Stay tuned. But first, we'll start up north where Lampang province is joining other northern provinces today by putting a total fire ban in place from today, March the 1st, until the end of April. Chiang Mai also started a ban on all deliberately lit fires from today, and Lampun, which is just south of Chiang Mai, already has one in place. The bans are timely after a hard weekend of air pollution in many of Thailand's provinces over the long weekend, even as far south as the tourist destination of Phuket, where visibility was down to about one kilometer and the smell of smoke was noticeable. The total fire bans have been applied by the provincial officials as part of an attempt to stamp out the annual practice of burning off sugarcane for harvesting and clearing other crops and burning the bio-waste. The annual problem is the major contributor of smoke and haze pollution in the northern and central areas of Thailand each year, usually between December and May. The burn-off season for farmers of sugar, corn and rice. While we're up in the north, four Thai women were arrested at a security checkpoint in Thak's Masaw district after they illegally crossed the border from Myanmar into Thailand. The first two Thai women were arrested on board a Masaw Bangkok bus at the Ban Hin Phon checkpoint in Masaw district. The other two women were caught later at the same checkpoint on a bus heading from Masaw to the northeastern province of Mukdahan. At the checkpoint, the four Thai women whose identities have not been disclosed said they worked at a casino in Myanmar and had illegally crossed the border into Thailand to return to their home provinces. They were initially charged with illegal entry. After going through a COVID-19 screening process, they were then put in local quarantine in Masot, pending further legal proceedings. Illegal casinos and fancy high so massage parlors in Myanmar in areas near the border have attracted wealthy Thais and Burmese alike. The establishments have also attracted plenty of Thais looking for well-paid work across the border. Now, in a major bust along the Mekong River, a notorious hot zone for drug trafficking, Border Patrol police seized 920 kilograms of dried, compacted cannabis from a boat along the Nakhon Patom riverbank that borders Laos. Police were tipped off about a large shipment of drugs being trafficked across the Thai-Lao border. Police spotted a boat early yesterday. When they moved in, the men on board the boat jumped into a smaller boat and sped off. Police found 23 sacks filled with one kilogram packages of compressed cannabis. In the recent months, police have seized more than five tons of cannabis. While the Thai government has been loosening measures on cannabis, allowing parts of the plant with low traces of THC to be used in food and medicinal products, trafficking cannabis is still illegal. Cannabis with high amounts of THC is still classified as a Category 5 narcotic in Thailand. Now on to the weekend violence as the protests resume where they left off. At least 22 people were arrested during the major Bangkok protests yesterday. It turned violent as pro-democracy activists marched towards the Thai PM's residence. It's been reported that one officer died during the rally, reportedly due to heart failure. At least 33 people were injured. That includes 23 police officers. The clashes happened in front of the 1st Infantry Regiment barracks on Wipawadi Rangsit Road and involved around 1,500 to 2,000 activists from the Restart Democracy Movement, part of the Free Youth Group. The group has been protesting against the government and calling for reform of the country's constitution and monarchy since protests began in July of last year. The Metropolitan Police Bureau deployed over 2,000 riot police with barricades erected to prevent protesters reaching the prime minister's home. Then at around 6.30 p.m., activists clashed with the police. Officers then deployed tear gas and a water cannon, allegedly using rubber bullets as protesters threw objects their way. Now, according to reports, protesters threw ping-pong bombs and firecrackers in the violent clash with the police. 
Police also hit protesters with batons after breaching the barricade of shipping containers that had been blocking the way to the prime minister's residence. Now, out of the 22 arrested, four were minors. Other detained protesters face charges of fighting, blocking, or harming a police officer. An official from the Metropolitan Police Bureau has denied that police used tear gas or water cannons, despite photos and videos clearly indicating the contrary. Police have also accused protesters of instigating the violence by using weapons and vandalizing government property. Now, speaking of an escalation in protests, just over the border in Myanmar, the weekend has seen the Tatmadaw, which is the Burmese army, ramp up their attempts to quell protests against last month's military coup. Today is exactly one month after the army took control of the country in a bloodless coup after declaring that the November election had been tainted with voter fraud. Up to now, they have not produced any evidence of this claim. Today, the UN Human Rights Office is calling for an immediate end to the use of force in Myanmar after at least 18 people were killed in violent clashes yesterday. Another 30 were injured. Those opposing the military coup have been taking to the streets, with police and military forces opening fire in what was the deadliest day so far. The UN ambassador to Myanmar condemned the military coup in a general assembly address in New York and called on the international community to act. He has since been fired by the head of the coup. The UNHCR claims that police have detained at least 85 medical professionals and students, as well as seven journalists who were present at the demonstrations. Over 1,000 individuals have been arbitrarily arrested and detained in the past month. Some of them remain unaccounted for. And Thailand's COVID-19 vaccine campaign started with Public Health Minister Anutin Chan Wirakun, who received the first of China's Sinovac vaccine yesterday. Prime Minister Prayutan Ocha was initially planned to be the first to kick off Thailand's immunization plan with the AstraZeneca vaccine, but due to problems with paperwork, the PM's injection was then postponed. Doctors, however, advised Prayut to get the AstraZeneca vaccine due to his age. Prayut is 66, and doctors say the Sinovac vaccine has been declared safe for people ages 18 to 59. Now, both shipments of the Sinovac and AstraZeneca vaccines arrived last week, but the AstraZeneca vaccine still needs to be officially endorsed by the medical science department. Along with Anutin, a number of other government officials and health professionals also received their vaccinations yesterday. Anutin's shot was administered by Thailand's top virologist, Yong Pu Warawan. And that's all for today's top stories. Now, as always, there is plenty of content on Tiger's YouTube channel, including from our very talented vloggers. So be sure to check them out. Meanwhile, you're up to date on the Tiger.